to, but we we've seen it from time to time. You look at a ricochet, ricochet never did as much. Um, you look at a um, oh gosh, we were just talking about him, uh, Chris Hero. You look at a Chris Hero. You look at uh, Sami Zayn. You look at Finn Balor. You look at some of these guys uh, of Kenta. NXT can take a little bit away from what they were. Champa, I think it elevated him. It gave him a little something more. He really wanted this. You you know, you can't talk about Champa without without Gargano. You can't talk about Gargano without Champa. And what's weird is they were never really close or even had a program together in the Indies. Yeah. But I look at somebody like Gargano, and Gargano was at one point my opinion of the best wrestler in the world at that time. This was probably five, seven, maybe eight years ago. Time runs wild to me. Ciampa was never really on my radar as somebody that I enjoyed watching. Then you go to NXT, you go to current day. Ciampa and Gargano, I still like Gargano more, but that's just personal, not professional. They're about even. So NXT brought Gargano down a little bit, I would say, but definitely elevated Ciampa. Yeah, no, I I remember he when DIY NXT. debuted, and I was like, "Who are these guys? I don't give a shit." And they've definitely turned my whole view around altogether. Uh, and and yeah. not knowing either guy beforehand, I gravitated definitely more to Gargano than than Ciampa. But I gotta say, man, well, he has personality. I'm Daddy's boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He sure. is the man, and NXT wouldn't be the same, and he wouldn't be the same without NXT. It's it's symbiotic, and there's some magic there, and I, I think they need to hold that lightning in a bottle and keep it going for as long as his body can go. There is some kind of magic there. Those two, NXT and Champa, just, yeah, you nailed it. Symbiotic They go is together the like tomatoes and champagne. For it. Yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do, pasty. Uh, speaking of champagne, now you can Man. buy Jericho's a little bit of the bubbly at a little bit of the bubbly dot com, and it's made by Arrow. Please don't buy <laughs> Jericho's a little bit of the bubbly. Just buy real champagne. <laughs> Come on, folks. Oh, with that being said, talk about a, a knockoff. We got WWE Survivor Series pasty. Yeah! The pay-per-view that Fat Mac couldn't even bring himself to watch a single match. I apologize, folks. We were so excited going into it. And then I watched War Games, and I was like, this is this does not (laughs) bode well. But it does not bode well, because everybody who was on that went through so much hell, and it has to compete the next night. You know what the worst part is, pasty? And this, spoiler alert, folks. I almost got a clean sweep on Survivor. Yeah. Survivor Series. Like, yes, I almost did. nailed every single one except for one. And I still didn't want to fucking watch it. <laughs> Actually, did I get a clean sweep? No. I did get a clean sweep. No, you're one off. Okay, I did get a clean sweep. Uh, no, I missed one. What did I miss? Oh, Roderick Strong. Okay, yep. Six out of seven. But nonetheless, like, I still didn't want to watch it. <laughs> oh, WWE, do something to do something to bring me back, please. I want to want to watch WWE. In all honesty, I don't want to hate them. And I don't hate them. And, in fact, I'm rooting for them. And I think that AEW especially, but along with all the other companies coming up, is pushing WWE to do better, hopefully. But we're still not seeing it yet. And no. I think this is this is proof right here. No, this is, all my hopes uh, were let, built up for this, and did NXT you watch any came of the, up uh, light. Pre-sh- no, I didn't because I had heard it started at six, and Which I thought that was the pre-show. I, I tuned in at like six fifteen, and the show oh. was already going. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I missed the all. show started at six. When did it end? Like ten thirty. Ten, huh? probably. Yeah, 10. it went. Because they've been ending at 9.30 lately, but it went longer than usual. So it was a four-hour pay-per-view, huh? With a two-hour well, I, I suppose because you got, well, you got, what, four matches with 27 people in them each? <laughs> yeah. 
So let's just let's just <laughs> knock off the results of the pre-show. Nobody gives a shit, right? Yeah. First match was interbrand tag team battle royal, seeing Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode win last, eliminating the Street Profits. Then we had the triple threat for the Cruiserweight Championship. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. NXT's Leo Rush successfully defended it against Raz, Akira Tozawa, and SmackDown's Kalisto. Who thought Kalisto was going to win? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Good, good, Good lucha things. Shit. Oh. Uh, three-way non-title tag team match. Viking Raiders defeated the New Day and Undisputed Era. So sad. Immediately so sad. setting a p- bad tone for NXT. <laughs> but let's say, well, well, honestly, though, the pre-show had a SmackDown win, uh, NXT win, and a Raw win. So they kept it even in the, in the pre-show. Yes. Right? Your just- end results are wrong, though. It was what? NXT 4, SmackDown 2, Raw 1. Where am I at? Uh, I didn't count the pre-show because pre-shows don't count. Oh, okay. I'm just That's what they had the tally at the end of the show. So that Pre-shows don't count, Pasty. <laughs> Haven't we been through this before? All right. Raw uh, shit the bed. Poor USA Network. They, <laughs> you know what? They talk about how much well, money, NXT uh, is USA, so it's still fine. Well, it's USA on a bad night at a bad time. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, maybe they, NXT they, will take Raw's Monday night time slot. They might end up, and they maybe <laughs> should. Because you talk, they talk so much about how much money Fox paid for, for SmackDown, and it is a ridiculous amount, and, and it's awesome for WWE. USA also paid a good chunk of money for this latest run of theirs. More than they and ever WWE, have, sure. Yeah, and WWE is treating them like shit. <laughs> Like fucking shit. Yeah, the consolation was, oh yeah, we'll give you NXT. Yeah, that that's about it. Which, but, by the way, but a, Fox a gets plus... CM Punk on our studio show on their own other channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, with that being said, we start the show out with the Women's Survivor Series match, Pasty, and this scene, Team NXT start off strong, winning. Of course, we had Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Candice <laughs> LeRae, Io Shirai, and Tony Storm. Well, defeat. I will set the the stage here for you and say Candice LeRae and Tony Storm got injured and were removed from the match for the bulk of the match. So it started out with TM to NXT only having three people. Oh, so That's it was exactly it was kind like of exactly war like War Games. Yeah, yeah, it was except kind of not as good. Paste. Yeah. So, um, which they, they up... right away you're like, wait, but this is NXT. <laughs> no, it's not. So they uh, <laughs> defied the odds by being two women down for a majority of the match, and they defeated Raw's team of Charlotte, Natalia, Asuka, Kyrie, and Sarah Logan, and SmackDown's team consisting of Sasha Banks, Carmella, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Nikki Cross. Shouts out to Dana Brooke and Batista. Can't wait to see that video. That's weird. <laughs> I don't even know what that's all about. The whole date thing. I don't know. I just know that he's like seven foot and she's like five one. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> kind of like my latest uh, my latest gal that I'm like, and she's like a good foot taller than me. It makes things interesting. But you know nice. what? I get a workout. Yeah, you got to work for it a little bit more. You do. You got to climb that mountain. <laughs> What was after that one, Pacey? <laughs> you watched it, I didn't. What the fuck was next? Well, I mean, we can't go without saying that, that Rhea did not pull out an awesome against the odds win because towards the end of the match, Candice LeRae and Tony Storm did rejoin the match. So that was, yeah. And by then, the numbers were already, like, even, so then Team NXT had the advantage, and it was unnecessary. I don't know. It's just, like I said, they, they made NXT... Into WWE in this pay per view, and it just rubbed me wrong. It was 28 minutes that could have been knocked down to 15, right? Yeah. And we could have knocked out probably th- at least a woman on each end. I mean, I get it. I don't know. I, I don't want to say my rant. It, it's been said before Survivor Series is a dated concept. It was, 
it was a good gimmick at the time to get a bunch of random people together in the ring together. Uh-huh. But it really, in this world where we have war games and we got six-man tags and we got, you know, four corners matches with, with triple tag teams, and stuff, it's really pointless. And the fact that brand supremacy doesn't mean a fucking thing or anything, it's we really need to stop Survivor Series. We need to kill this. Right. Cuz it's not enjoyable, it's not fun. It gets At least boring, at least get rid of rigged. either Survivor Series or Night of Champions. No, I'll keep Night, I'll keep I'll keep uh Clash and Night both. I, I'm fine with that, but get rid of this one because we don't need a match that has 15 people in the ring at the same fucking time. I'll give them props though. It was Multiple three teams, times. right? It was three teams and there was three people in the ring at all times. So that's that was cool. I don't care. I do. That's a big thing to me. I don't like when there's three teams and two people in the ring. I I get you, but there's, yeah, I get you. uh, Yeah. And then we also did get to see uh, Charlotte Flair and Lacey Evans finally have a stare down. And then I think Flair eliminated Evans like two seconds later. Sad. She should have eliminated Flair. It would have done, it wouldn't (laughs) have hurt Charlotte, but it would have done a lot for Lacey Evans character. Yeah. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't entirely remember because this was multiple weeks ago and, I'm not good at remembering a week after it happens. So whatever. I'm not. I'm not Moving good on at to the next match, Fat Mac. What do we got? Oh my god! We're going on to a three-way non-title match with the mid-card champions. That's Roderick Strong defeating AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura, giving NXT two wins in a row on the main card. We had both picked AJ Styles on this match because we are stupid and Roderick is strong. Yes, and Shinsuke is Nakamura. Yes. Um, Didn't watch it, but I heard that it was disappointing considering the three people involved. Yeah, yeah but it should have been Maybe the better. best match of the month night. Yeah. Maybe after NXT Championship, those two. Uh, I don't know. Speaking of that, we had the NXT Championship match. Adam Cole defeated the man who won the night before, Pete Dunne, in a match that was watered down for two amazing athletes, right? Yes, exactly. They didn't even let the match with just NXT guys feel like an NXT match because it would steal the show, right? They should have gave they should have gave this match twenty eight minutes. Yeah. I think so. Fuck yeah! I'd Fuck watch yeah. that. Just change the time slot around with the women's match because 16 minutes, 45 seconds would have been plenty for that shit. Switch it around with the men's. I don't, I don't care for half the people on that team anyways. Uh, the men's was it was okay. It was, the whole pay-per-view was just okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was worth a watch, but it wasn't great. Not not what I was expecting. Was it worth a Was it worth a four and a half hour watch, Pasty? No. Uh, Adam Cole okay. and Pete Dunne were so not what I expected that I did end up dozing off during their match, and I slept through the next match, which was the Universal Championship. The Fiend Bray Wyatt defeating Daniel Bryan to retain his championship. I slept through it. I didn't even see it, and I didn't even go back. I was like, I should well, go back and watch that, and then I didn't. Shortest match of the night, and from anything I've read online, wasn't a good match. It would be what all. you would expect. I guess Daniel did get some decent offense in, but, you know, it's not going to do anything against The Fiend. No. Until, and I have this theory because they say that Liv Morgan's going to come and be the Sister Abigail thing, and I think the way you play it is you play it like uh, she's kind of like Paul Bearer where she can be with Bray and on his side and make him stronger, or she can side with somebody else and take all of his powers away, and then he's able to lose the championship. Yeah. And it I kind mean, of, you could keep her with him forever in that sense, where if he, you know, he, he's got to atone for his sins, so she has to punish him, and then she feels yeah. bad for him, so she comes back. And, like, there's, there's See, ways to play that. I've, I've never met Liv Morgan in real life, so it's hard for me to, to 100% say this. But it's going to be hard for her to do that, I guess. Yeah, I don't see Liv Morgan being a fucking <laughs> sister Abigail. That just, to me, out of all the women that are awesome for it, a Nikki Cross, a Sarah Logan, uh, I mean, you could even throw somebody in like Paige or or maybe even like Bailey going super psycho or they sign Sue Young or, I mean, like, mm. uh, Liv Morgan? Like, I, I think people have just said that because she's gone and because he's introducing a new character. I don't know that there's any 
And like I said, well, unless, the, the, she's been gone her. and she's been doing a bunch of stuff on Twitter and Instagram that makes it seem like she's losing her mind and sinking into insanity and sh-